Hey, James G here. Today on Persona Studio One, I'm going to discuss the Persona Stock Pro EQ plugin. This is a really great uh, EQ plugin that comes with the software. It's the one I always use for EQ. I, I have probably three or four in my setup, but I always go to this one. It's just I, I like how it works. It's very effective. I think it's it's laid out really simple. Um, there's a couple of others that I will use uh, for mastering and things like that, but this is kind of my go-to pro EQ. Uh, we're not going to get into a ton of EQ uh, you know, techniques and things like that. That will be for other videos. I just kind of want to get an overall of this plugin. So I've got a little acoustic guitar track here um, that was recorded, uh, I don't know, months before. I just kind of pulled it from one of our many, many, many files. Um, but it's a good, solid, raw track. So uh, you'll hear me talk a lot through a lot of videos about what I call G-Rats, is get it right at the source, okay? And what that means is you want to get the best possible take. Uh, you want to get the best mic, mic placement, mic setup, sound from your player and everything that you can. That is really where most of your recording should come from. It shouldn't be trying to fix the thing afterwards, right? So all your effects and all that other stuff is just cutting and editing and, and just kind of letting it sparkle and getting the, the most out of that recording. But it should already be there. So this is a pretty good solid track. Let's give it a little listen. So pretty solid track there. It's a is a is this a Taylor guitar that we had and we we mic'd it with uh, just a single AKG C214 condenser mic. Pretty sure it's probably from one of our demo videos. Um, anyway, so um, that is the raw track as it is. So over here, if you remember, if you don't have your browse screen up, you can just hit that up there. We're going to scroll all the way down under our effects tab and we're going to get the Pro EQ. Now, you can open this and you'll see all these presets and things, uh, which are you can also get to once you open up the Pro EQ. But since Studio One is so great about drag and drop, I can literally take this Pro EQ and I'm going to drag it over to, I can drag it to the, uh, the channel up here, the track that I did, or I can tra drag it to the inserts down here. Either one is fine. So it's going to put that, insert that in, and it's going to pull up. So here is your Pro uh, EQ just default setting, right? Everything's flat, nothing's turned on yet. Now, if you want to mess with some presets, you definitely can. You just go to your Dropbox here and figure out whatever you're doing. Like uh, if I wanted to go in here and I could do uh, instrument, and then I could look at, okay, here's guitar, okay, clear acoustic. So these are pretty generic. Um, and it's not a bad thing to use them by any means. Uh, they obviously are great starting points, but every guitar is different. Your ear is different. There's all kinds of things that are different. Um, so you may want to just do it on your, your own. But you can very well, like I said, you can hit boom here, and then this is kind of a, uh, a generic for most acoustics kind of a thing, right? Always go back to default, and it will take you there. So if you look here, you've got your, uh, your low frequency, there's mid frequency, and your high frequency, and then uh, low cut, low mid frequency, and then high mid frequency, and then your high cut, okay? This gain knob here is an overall gain for uh, post EQ. So uh, I don't tend to use this a whole lot. A lot of times people get EQ, they boost everything and it's louder so they think it sounds better. That's not necessarily entirely true. Just because it's louder doesn't mean that it's going to be better, right? You might be boosting some problems. Um, but anyway, so the first thing that I can do is I can definitely take any of this stuff and I can mess with it while I'm listening here. So what I'll do is I'll just take this low cut here and you'll definitely hear all the low end changes I get rid of it. Right? I can I can take it all the way up and give it a grab the mid there. Right? <laughs> it sounds like it's coming out of a phone from across the street. Okay. But that's what this is. This is your um, so now once I hit that, you can see the low cut I have activated. Um, and this pretty much can do anything I need it to do except change the shelving. If you know what the shelving is, that's basically the uh, how uh, sharp that the angle is down where it really just cuts. So here's a 24. You can see the angle change there. And then 36, it's even. Okay. Um, for instance, I almost, I low cut almost... Every vocal track, I, I move this up until 
until I hear a really slight change and then I back it off. So what it's doing is it's cutting a low frequencies you probably can't even hear, uh, but eventually, you, you know, you get enough of those tracks, it adds up together. So that was this, the orange one here. This will control your, your gain and everything for the uh, low filter. And then you have the same thing for the yellow, which is low mid, mid, green, and then there's kind of a tur uh, turquoise, uh, whatever you want to call that color there. I call it seafoam green because I'm a guitar guy. Uh, but it's <laughs> that, and then of course you got this light blue up here, which is your, your high pass filter. Now, each of these sections have the same thing in it. They're just four different sections. This first one is the Q. So the Q is how tight you're getting that one signal frequency. So if you see on the orange here, I have, as I move this Q up, you'll see it really pinpoint down very direct to like that. The gain, obviously, you can use this knob to push and pull it up and down as well. And then this will move the frequency left and right because there's a certain range that it, that, that, um, that it tends to sit, but it <laughs> actually can go anywhere, right? Um, and so you get that on each one of those. And then, of course, here is your high-pass filter. So it's going to be very similar to over here where you've got that shelving that can, can move it from from there. And so that is an overall view of this. You can actually change your level range here to make it very, very simple, but you tend to want to get as many dBs as you can because it's really going to set it across um, here. You can even change uh, the what the EQ looks like. Uh, you got waterfall, third octave, 12 octave, and then the, your curve here is changing um, in the background of that. So that is generally what you're going to see when you get on this. And this simply right here is a bypass button. So you definitely want to, let's just get, I'm going to guess here, we'll do a little bit on this guitar here. So there's your curve. There's a waterfall. Third octave. Most of the time you'll sit right in that 12th octave. Muddy there. I'm going to play that again. If we wanted to get a little sparkle out of it. So when I hit this bypass button, I hit the bypass button, you'll hear it, the original track, and then when I put it, the EQ back on, you'll hear the difference. That is essentially the uh, Personas Stock Pro EQ in a very simple nutshell. Just remember you can get all your presets here and preload them if you want. If you hit default, it will take everything at zero and you can start from scratch.